what it do y'all back at it again it's tidane back at it again female hip-hop now i have with me all right you said second verse of knocking pictures off the wall what does that mean like were you the, the feature on there yeah i was a feature on that okay okay how was that um being featured on that, that track uh that that was that was real that was real big to me. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Um being that I had met met the CEO at a uh, seminar. Okay. And then he gave me a, a invitation to the studio so I hung out for like a few months. Okay. The song was already done for a long time. Uh, okay. It just had it just had an empty space on it that had my name on there. Okay. And that was like the uh first song I ever did in the real studio. Really? So the first song you ever did in the real studio became a hit? How did that make you like feel? Cause like usually people don't run into something that lucky or something that blessed from their first like uh, start. So I mean, it, it, it took me by storm it, it, as much as it did the consumers. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it hit me and it and it, it really just like a wildfire just spread. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It went from, straight from the streets. You know what I'm saying? On some pump the dump type shit. Okay. Yeah, knew it, it was in regular rotation. It was on the road doing some shows, tours, and shit. Okay, okay, I feel that on the road doing shows. Let's backtrack. All right, so what inspired your name, Laflex? Um, shit, I was young. I was in a group called Cypher Criminals back in Cleveland. You know, we were just coming up. You know, we was getting our little airbrush hats and shit. Like, we were just thinking, thinking the names that fit. You know. I was just fumbling around with some shit. I had a versatile style, so I'm like, flex, it fit. And then it kind of fit my swag on it. Okay. On top of that. Okay, okay. So, Lil Flex, all right. And so, Lil Flex, how was, like, where did you grow up? Or where, like, how was it growing up in your environment in Houston? Uh, growing up in Houston, it, it was different. It was different than what I was used to, you know what I'm saying? When I came down here, it was pretty pretty much more laid back than what it was in my, okay. in my hometown, you know what I'm saying? Like. Everybody was pretty much getting money and just, you know what I'm saying, doing their thing down here. Like, up there, wet no flashy, riding on swingers and pop trunk and all that. So, so yeah, I'm going to say, shit, the, the culture embraced me even before the uh, before the music had popped off. Okay. This is where it all started at, you know what I'm saying? Town Park and Gessner, you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to the Gilbert. Uh, R.I.P. to Derek, my home for a little D, Benji. Okay. Home, That's what you repping? Benji clothing? Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. So you said, so are you originally from Houston? Uh, Where are you originally from? Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. So how did you get to Texas? Uh, shit, uh, my parents divorced when I was in like second grade or whatever. Okay. And, uh, my stepfather came down here. Uh, they always kept a line of communication open. So when I got like in the 10th grade, I got to my 10th grade year, I came down here. Okay. So being from the Midwest, do you see any similarities between the Midwest and that Southern style? Did you see any similarities or was it a culture shock? A, a huge culture shock. Like, I, like we'd be riding and I'd be like, hey, pop this twister in, you know what I'm saying? Check this shit out real quick. And they'd be like, this shit going too fast. Boop. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I feel it. Oh, so they didn't like the Twister. They didn't like it. They like their music slower down, so. Yeah, they fuck with Twister, but it had to be slow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I noticed that a lot. Like, when I was, when you hear Twister, it's a lot of it's, like, kind of chopped and screwed. Kind of a little bit. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. All right. So, your project, Time to Play. How did you come up with that title for that project, Time to Play? Uh, when I came, when I came to the uh, label, like, everybody, like, was already, like, in the process of having their album done, artwork and shit was already done. And I was just on the sideline waiting, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, shit, it's my turn to get in, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Shit, I'ma open up, I'ma open up, I'ma close it, I'ma come jump in the game when I want to, step back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fade right away, shot, go, go for the face, high up. You know okay. Okay, I feel that, I feel that. So on that project, I like the cover. What was the inspiration behind the cover? Because it's kind of like what we call the uh, the bling bling covers. Yeah. What was the inspiration behind the cover of that project? 
uh, it, it really didn't have no inspiration just back then. Uh, everybody was, uh, was dealing with pen and pixel, master pen, cash money, and all them. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like everybody just went to the same person and get that work done. Okay, good. The idea and the concept was just kind of put together on the spot. Okay, okay, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. All right, so you got some songs on there that really, like, really stuck out. One of them was Player. And it's like a sweet little love song. It's kind of what I call like a hood love song. What was what was your inspiration behind that? It was like you in love for real or you was just trying to speak game? Like how was it that song come up in the studio? Um, I took bits and, bits and pieces, you know what I'm saying? I was actually coming out of, you know what I'm saying? Coming out of a situation, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Being like, she really couldn't take Take okay. that the music was taking off how it did, you know okay. what I'm saying? And then kind of drew a wedge between us and made it separate, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, so I just kind of like brought, you know what I'm saying, brought everybody to my world, like with, you know what I'm saying, with kicking it be like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, I like that, I like that. All right, and then you got a song called Chickens. All right, can you give us like a breakdown on what that song was about? Like for the people that don't know, that's one of my favorite songs on there. Chickens, man, this is kind of like, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it was kind of like inspired by 8 Ball and MJG. You know okay, yeah. And we was, you know, we kind of, the group that I was with prior to, prior to uh, signing, you know, we used to kind of do little duplicate shit like do or die little groups okay. like that and kind of imitate. So it really wasn't, it really wasn't, you know, the, the, the beat, the beat kind of gave us a leeway on which kind of way, what direction we wanted to lean towards with it. Okay. And the melodies kind of just came out and we, we had a, uh, we had a singer in the, in the, uh, yeah. in the uh, studio with us at that time, a uh, track. And she, he just started singing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she would just kind of rock with it like that. Okay, I feel that, I feel that. Hold on, y'all. So you said Chicken was like on some inspiration for like, uh, I bought MJG, do it die type stuff. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Now the single "Knocking Pictures Off the Wall" it it recently resurfaced because a young artist, Mona Leo, redid it. Yeah. Um, how was how did that feel having a, a artist like real real young to get that song and remix it and put our own spin on it? I mean, it's it's cool. You know, I can't I can't really take I can't really take no credits for it because I didn't write the hook. I didn't. I didn't produce the track and nothing like that. Yeah. But just, you know, it just, it's a pleasure to be, you know, you know it's, a, you know, an honorable moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Straight up. Okay. I feel that. I feel that. All right. And, um, whew. All right. One word to describe this chapter in your life. Like, if your life was a book, what would be, what would you call this chapter? It's funny, it's funny you say that because I'm, I'm working on the book. The book is called Serious. Serious? Okay. What's the inspiration behind that book, Serious? Behind the scenes shit that happened in the process of uh, doing music. Uh, being, you know what I'm saying? Family man. Okay. Being in the streets. Okay. Trying to juggle this shit. Being on probation. Okay. Uh, in and out of jail. Okay. Uh, concerts went wrong. Okay. Mother don't want to pay up and lead to a big altercation. Okay. So the shit that we go through, that, okay. don't, get, that don't get no recognition behind it. Okay, I feel it. I feel it. How do you feel about the? Um, you said serious. This is called this uh, chapter in your life. How do you feel about the current state of Texas hip hop right now? How do you feel about the current state of Texas hip hop right now? Oh, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, Texas exactly, you know what I'm saying, where they where they should be in, 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 my, in my sight. Okay, okay, I feel that, I feel that, I feel that. You want to go ahead and shout out your social medias to your supporters? Yeah, follow, follow me on Facebook, Flex Mill with two X's, A-M-I-L-L. Follow me on Instagram, Flex Now with four W's, all one word. All right, thank you for tapping in with Female Hip Hop Now.